What's going on everybody, Kenny Nobis here with a, another Mega Man X Dive Cap Overview video. Today we're going to be going over Eratar or Erato, uh, as she is known in the game by many of the community and some of the indie players that she released recently in the global version. So, let's take a look at her. Alright, so here we are taking a look at Erato here. And I enjoy playing uh, Erato once I first got her way back when she released initially on the Power and Burn. Let's take a look at her active skills real quick. First up, we have the Sacred Realm skill. And Sacred Realm deploys a field dealing a roughly 101% attack damage to all tar uh, targets in range, dealing continuous damage to those that remain in range of the Sacred Realm, as well as inflicting a defense crush status on the targets when deployed you also gain a enhanced defense enhanced damage and enhanced defense status uh effects of the field cannot be removed and ignores preventative shield uh does not take any damage or debuff all the status or debuff status when used so pretty loaded skill right here for Arado. So let, let's take a closer like like little you know look at it right here so not only do you do the damage damage over time uh you put defense crush um you flick you also inflict um attack crush alongside enhanced damage and the enhanced defense status that you gain for yourself now all these are 25 percent each according to the wiki here on top of having true show time so what that means is while you're using this skill you know like while you're casting it in, in the animation you will not be damaged by anything and you will not be satisfied like with any satisfaction um, and that cannot, you know, be stolen or anything because that is true show time. As for the modifier chips here, we have a defense amplification, which increases the defense enhancement by 30%. Not bad there. Then we have light of purity. When casting skill, move all negative status effects that you have. And finally, we have holy invitation. When you use the skill, force targets within range to move in front of you. Skill only works on players, and that one is actually very, very good. And if you're using Arado in PvP, this is what you're going to be using. Now, I was using her, obviously, in PvE. As you can see, she's only one star, so it's not like I really had much of a choice. But the the Asuna or, yeah, the Asuna or status cleansing isn't bad either. However, we do have quite a lot of true statuses in the game at this point. So you might not want this, though it could still be helpful. But again, if you're doing PvP, this is probably what you're going to want to use. Following that, we have the Divine Summoning skill. Summons a Divine Spirit to your side. The Holy Spirit will attack, will automatically lock onto the enemy and attack. And the Holy Spirit will disappear after eight attacks or six seconds skill to summon. Each attack does roughly 81% um, attack damage as the multiplier. As for the modifier chips here, we have Mobility, reduces prep time by 20%. Rapid spotting, which increases accelerate the attack damage speed, well, attack speed by 40%. And finally, the one you're going to be using um, in PvP most of the time, or just all the time, this is the best one. Uh, Divine Resonance. When Divine Spirit is summoned, damage in increased by 12% and damage taken reduced by 12%. Now, these I like, even though it is conditional, uh, this, these are buffs that cannot be taken away from you, right? You could argue that, yeah, like it, it is taken away from you while, you know, when the spirit is down. Uh, but, you know, like this can't be taken away from you by Grudge Axe. Though, if you're facing Arado, you probably don't really want to be, be getting in tussling range with her because um, she she's pretty deadly at close range. And we'll get in more on that in her passives, because first up, we have Divine Blessings. After launching Sacred Realm, it restores 50% of the user's attack as HP. This is effectively what you're going to do after 6 seconds. So, every time you cast your Sacred Realm, you will get healed for 50% of your attack, which is pretty good. Next up, we have Visual Seer. Divine Spirit's attack causes a defocused state when it hits the target, and there's a 25% chance the attack will fail to hit the target. Now, this is quite nice as well. Now, this will be stopped by Preventative Shield. However, if the opposition does not have Preventative Shield, then they will get hit with Defocus, and they have a, you know, uh, a 1 in 4 chance to miss their attack. And if they happen to continuously hit that 1 in 4, not only are they going to be upset, but you will be pretty safe as your HP will stay intact. Following that, we have Realm Erosion. When Sacred Realm hits a target and closes a slow status that cannot be removed, it ignores the Reign of Shield, when we see reduced by 30% and can be stacked up to two levels. 
Which will see your default get status cannot be removed and ignores protective shield and the effect will increase a 50% chance to attack with the target. So now this default is now there's a one in two chance, you know, 50% chance of this of the defocus resolving properly, which is much better than a 25% chance. Like it gets doubled. So that's great for you. That's so good for your opponent. On top of that, Sacred Realm, when it's the opponent, it slows them down. And what do we know about Sacred Realm? Well, not only does it heal you, but this is the skill where if you hit someone in range, they, they get, like, vacuumed in front of you. So, uh, it's going to be a lot harder for them to get away from you in that case. So, you will be able to take advantage of that and just unleash with your... What's this called? With your Divine Summoning or just with your weapons at that point. And, you know, just go ballistic, go buck wild and deal lots of damage within that time. Next up, we have Power of Divine Protection. The scope of Divine Spirit Attack is enlarged and go through batteries and terrains, and that, you know what, that's always great. I'd love to see this on a passive. When it hits a target, it calls a lock on status to target, adding an additional 17% attack damage. When it hits again by Divine Spirit Attack, it can be stacked up to five levels. So now when you use your Divine Spirit, uh, you get a stackable damage debuff onto them. This doesn't ignore ignore Run of Shield, but hey, that's fine. And it can go through terrains and barriers now, which is great. These are the passives like I like to see what has a lot kicked into it. Though um, this also means that this is a very, very strong passive as well. And then finally, we have the power of divine protection. When you are attacked, you gain uh, you can use Sacred Realm again. So you use Sacred Realm, deal some damage, inflict the fat slow. Uh, get the heal, and then uh, with this you get attack, you can use it again. You also gain an enhanced defense state, which reduces damage by 40%. This effect can only be triggered once more after a 6 second cooldown. Uh, and you get the enhanced defense state already from this, so you get a separate enhanced defense state um, on that as well uh, for this. And... Uh, and when HP is lower than 35%, it will also release a barrage that attacks all targets in this path. The barrage will only fire once per battle. Now, according to the wiki here, because I don't have it unlocked in this account, this barrage um, shoots out 50 projectiles, and like they're, they're, they're a tiny projectile, or small, randomly split into different directions. Barrage attack is 50% of your attack damage, so... Uh, you know, that is just something else that will come in handy if the opposition decides to get close and try to go for the kill uh, when you're at low HP. And because of the defense buffs that you get from the from this passive and from your Sacred Realm, odds are you actually might be able to live a couple of that with the defense boost you get from this as well. Um, you know, it'll be a pretty good time for you, assuming, you know, all the stars align, you have all that, all that stuff active there. Next up, we're going to take a look at her DNA. Um, DNA is not available in global yet, but showing it as per usual, just so you know what's going to happen. However, DNA isn't really that good for PV, PVP anyway, which is where Arado is, uh, you know, it's going to be widely used. Um, you can use her against raid bosses as well. And speaking of raid bosses or bosses in general, first passive enchantment when you target a boss character the damage is increased by six percent we attack by a boss character the damage you receive is reduced by six percent not bad damage amp damage mitigation nice there just inherently on one passive so that means boss killer and boss hunter will all stack with this here next up divine enchantment increase of damage multiplier of divine by ten percent which eh, that's not all that great uh Arado's already a pretty loaded character as it is so that's why her dna is pretty lackluster here and then this one's actually really interesting. Visual destruction. After Divine hits a target, it will cause blind. After it's triggered, it can only trigger up to 4 second cooldown. Now, the blind here is kind of D colon, to be quite honest with you. Um, blind isn't all that great in general. I don't really like it all that much. Uh, it doesn't really do all that much, realistically. Um, yes, it does obscure the screen, but you can still see the arrow, so you still know where you know the, the opposition is. Uh, some things that might be obscured, though, are, you know, stage, uh, like, like enemies on the stage, maybe stage terrain. So you're going to have to rely a little bit on your, like, maybe, like, your muscle memory and your memory of the stage. And the, uh, hopefully you know the, the map geometry. And for her unique recombined DNA, we have continual damage stimulate. When you're in continual damage status, increase damage you deal by 12%. I don't really like this one. Um, I don't think we have any true dot damage in the game. 
Um, but this could have also just been something better. However, again, she's already a loaded character as it is. So there's that. Uh, as for her other things here, we have short range boost, which is pretty nice that there. Boss killer would be good for bosses. Uh, crisis adaptability, that's okay. Um, her preparation and amplification increase damage by 6%. Went above that, that's okay. Spire amp, that's pretty good. Um, and then that's it. Yeah, fodder killer too, but you don't care about fodder killer at all. And then over here, uh, we have some resistances here. Defocus special attack will be pretty good because you can the focus, defense crush, um, damage reduction special attack. These two are good as well because you can put these naturally. Uh, other than that, not much else there to worry about. But that's going to be it for Arado's kit. So let's take a look at some weapons that will pair well with her. All right, so for Arado in particular, again, she is one of those characters that doesn't really mesh well with any type of weapon. And when I say mesh well, she doesn't have any inherent uh, damage amplification when she's using a weapon. So that could be good and bad. Um, it's good because you can use basically anything with her and like you know there's you don't have to worry about lo potentially losing out on a potential damage but it also means that you can use anything with her and one of the things i always recommend when characters like this is the tried and true buster melee combo so air buster air buster just allows you to engage and disengage very very easily she already has uh, attack buffs and defense buffs so having a speed buff there will be fantastic uh, another buster here, the Explosive Bolt. Explosive Bolt is, in my opinion, the best sniper buster here, uh, especially coupled with the Player Killer Hidden Skill. Now, you can opt to go with the Penetration Hidden Skill, but Penetration Hidden Skill requires a bit more uh, coordination, might not be something to open maps, and Player Killer is just more consistent. You can always just swap to it and deal more damage with it that way. Uh, aside from that, we're definitely going to have to include the Sniper Buster. Oh, wait. Did I pass it? I had to have passed it because I own Sniper Buster. Yeah, here it is. Sniper Buster is also a good option as well if you're using a long range Buster. Um, you know, but Explosive Wolf's better. However, this is the, you know, this is a free Buster weapon that you can get by making it in the Research Lab. And on top of that, we have the Limited Buster, the... I what it's called. The destructive laser is also a option you can use as well. But I think the you would want to use the other busters, the especially the explosive bolt. Oh, honestly, uh, there is another one that I low-key forgot about, even though I like it, I just don't think it's as good. It's the Hawk Precision Buster. It is also a pa fairly powerful sniper buster. So you can see this does 120%. This does 150. I think this does 120% as well. It does 120. But this also has the added effect of being able to pierce terrain. Um, but in order to pierce terrain, you need to have your quick hunt buff active. In order to get that, you need to hit a target in mid to long range. Once you get to, I think, what is this, two star here, you can activate quick hunt in mid range. Uh, following that, the melee weapons I would recommend using are, as per usual, the Nightmare. Nightmare is just a good weapon. You can get a stackable attack buff on this as well so you can go nightmare and you can go the air buster to engage and or disengage very quickly deal some damage another thing you can do is uh use the ancient relic for the utility of it um it has a few good hidden passives here it has access to access to a speed buff which you can make use of and a shield and Rado doesn't have a shield of her own so uh, you can easily make use of that there. You can even make use of the crit damage, but I don't really like the crit damage as much. I think the shield is the... I, I'm sorry, the shield. I think the speed rune is the best one for PvP. Uh, if you're using this for PvE, uh, I would say protective rune would be better, but that's not really only for characters that don't have their own shield. Uh, following that, we have the Grudge Axe. Grudge Axe is one of the best, if not the best, melee weapon in dive currently still uh the reason it is fairly good is because it has a chance of just stealing buffs off of the target and putting them onto you so that you can easily just yoink a buff away from someone and make use of it that way um but we do have to keep in mind that we're heading towards an era where a lot of buffs will not be able to be removed from the target so it's something you have to keep in mind if you're using the grudge axe Something else I also wanted to call out back here is the Singularity Slasher. Singularity Slasher is more consistent at removing buffs from the opposition. However, the Singularity Slasher dispels the buffs rather than giving them to you. So, 
um, if you have a secondary slash on a grudge axe, uh, you can use this. But uh, I think grudge axe is a lot better because why would you just dispel the buff when you can just take it away? Now, grudge axe is a bit of RNG, but once you have it fully upgraded, it's a 60% chance to trigger each time you use an attack with the grudge axe. And considering how potent dash slashing is, uh, you're going to be you know, you're going to be proccing that 60% chance multiple times in a row. So the odds are typically going to be in your favor um, because of how much more frequently you're going to be using it to take the buff away. You can use sprayers as well with Arado, but I don't think sprayers are as good on a character like Arado. She doesn't inherently have her own speed buff, uh, though if you do want to use sprayers, I would have to recommend the Gator Fangs. As Gator Fangs is a powerful weapon, especially at close range with the Rending Fang, the Predator, and the Rapid Reload. You'll be able to get damage off very, very quickly. And all that combined with how Arado, if she gets close to you, uh, you basically won't get away. That will be very, very good for just deleting the opposition. Another option is the Explosive Blower. The Explosive Blower is another powerful sprayer. It's a little bit weaker than the Gator Fangs, uh, but what the Gator Fangs uh, trades for, the Gator Fang also has a slow attached to it, but the Explosive Blower has a stun attached to it. So if you get close, uh, you can make sure that they actually just don't get away because of the shock wave in the instant explosion. Instant explosion makes sure shock wave goes off every four seconds instead of every five seconds. And as you can see here, once every five seconds, you can run the target immobile. Though, um, like I said, I wouldn't really recommend using this in particular with her. I think you should use something that has a speed boost with her, or you could go down the route for the, um, the zoner route. I guess I don't have it on this account still. Uh, the Decides Will. The Decides Will is a fantastic weapon for zoning. Most characters don't like it because of how good it is and kind of how overbearing it makes zoners to deal with. Um, as per usual, uh, it doesn't matter if you can't auto-aim or if auto-aim auto is turned off. This weapon will still auto-aim. Um, it has a laser. Uh, it can affect the mark status as well, and it pierces terrain, which is all very, very good if you're trying to deal damage from a distance. But if you don't have the Decides Will, you can always uh, use the Dollar Store version and the Cannon God. Cannon God is, like I said, the Dollar Store version. Uh, decides Will at home kind of thing. Pierces terrain, has long range. You know, you don't need to really even be on screen when hitting with it. However, the Cannon God does not does not have the, the mark capability or the auto aim capability. So you have to worry about that. And outside of that, I think that that's basically if you're using Arado for PvP. Uh, if you're using it for PvE, obviously it's going to depend on what you're doing in PvE. Uh, if you're fighting a boss, boom, you want the Sinister Shadow Snaver. Um, you could use the Ramen Sword as well if you're just doing generic Pv PvE stuff. I don't have it on this account, but I'm not the Ramen Sword, I'm sorry. The Festive Specialty Sword. Or like anything else that will allow you to have healing would be good here. Uh, so maybe the Bubble Bomber or the heart spray gun for sprayers the super mag gun for machine guns also i didn't mention the neon laser for bosses and the sensor gatling gun for bosses as well so now that we're done taking a look at some weapons of parallel with the rattle let's take a look at some cards real quick all right and again as per usual it's going to really depend on what you're doing with arado in general i say this all the time but you're your cards are going to be highly dependent on what you're building your character for on top of being able to try to try to discern um, what's going to be in your DNA, because if passives are in your DNA, they will not stack with what your cards are as long as they have the same name. However, with a character like Arado, I think you could maybe get away with some bulk on her, to give her a bit more longevity just because of how her kit works. So you can probably get away with actually running a bit of a bulky build, you know, maybe some player sentinels in her kit somewhere. So that will be something good to have in her kit. I don't remember something that has player sentinel right now, though. Uh, I am drawing a blank. Uh, however, something that will work well on her is the Akuma card using her PvP. Uh, the Master of the Fist will increase damage and damage done, damage taken in PvP uh, by players. It will stack with Player Killer because that's a different name. You also have the M. Bison card as well because M. Bison has the Player Killer too. But these two cards are from the Street Fighter collaboration, so if you didn't get them then, uh, you missed out on them. However, there are other cards that have Player Killer attached to them. We have the Sigma S4 second card, 
and we have the life aura card from base you can get these from the token shop so you can get those there and if you're really trying to ball on a budget like really budget uh there is the mac card which you can get from card packs that's available through rng if i can find it down here right here that's player killer two and fully max otherwise it will have player killer one or the wheel gator card which you can make in the research lab that's player killer one but when max it will have player killer two now outside of that we have the oh yes we have the double eight hunter setup if you're going to buster melee this is what you're going to be using uh, use double eight hunter and a red card because you get the double amplification double adaptability buster melee so then you get 14 percent damage amplification and damage mitigation no you get 18 percent i lied i'm sorry because you get eight percent here from a non five star version of this card and you get 10 percent here so uh if you have if you have double elite hunter on top of the uh the third modified ship for her for her divine spirit um that's 30 percent damage mitigation while the spirit is active just for kind of existing right there so off of your cards alone and then a good red card to pair with this is the excess memories card which you can get from the deep recorder uh, i think it's up here yep so memories of buster amplification there or you can use the x and zero card uh this card i think was available as a monthly reward so you might not be able to get this anymore uh if i can find it ah yes the x and zero card here buster adaptability has that and also has adversity amplification as well Another interesting tech that you could do if you really want to lean into the defocus special attack or the defocus side of things, you can add the heat gut style. Um, just two of these uh, because you need three reds. You can stack two of these. This should be 14%, I believe. If this is at five star, you have one at four star. So that'll be eight and six. That's 14. First additional damage on the target is the focused. The Douglas card also could work as well for the double um, if you're using Buster Melee. However, you only get double amplification from this. You don't get the double adaptability from this. Ah, here's a card with Player Sentinel right here. The Spy Devil card has so Player Sentinel 2. Uh, but if you max it out, you have Player Sentinel uh, 3 here. And that stack these two together because this triggers off the of red. So you can put these two together and you will have access to... Um, 14% damage mitigation while in PvP on top of the 12% that you get from um, Erato's passive just in general for having the the spirit out. Which, oh, I also forgot the her her Divine Realm passive, which decreased damage you take by 25%, amplified damage you deal by 25%. So then you do even more damage. And if you opt to go with the double sentinel build with this card right here you actually also get out of control special attack and if you happen to be using the grudge axe you deal even more damage out of control special attack that's of course 14 percent more damage if you're using the double spy devil setup all right i think that will wrap up things here for erato she's a pretty good unit uh, she definitely excels at pvp but she's also pretty solid versus bosses as well just because of her fat buffs and fat debuffs they are very very potent and she has the same ability with her healing passive due to this and she can semi skill spam because of this and get even more damage mitigation through that so she's pretty decent at that as well now should you pull for Arado? uh that's gonna that's gonna be up to players uh, i think if you want a character that's really solid for pvp and decent for boss raid as well sure you can go for Arado. Uh, she'll be good for that and um you know she's 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 pretty meta as well so that is also another thing to keep in mind if you want to use her assuming you actually care about being in the meta but yeah uh that's going to be it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did be sure to like comment and subscribe help the channel as you go show you join the content and i'd like to give a quick shout out to my youtube channel members and my patrons thank you for supporting me and allowing me to do what i do if you like to uh, if you like to support me as a YouTube channel member or as a supporter on patreon you find information down below in the video description and i will catch you guys in the next video later